And welcome back to the Kansas City Royals franchise mode here on MLB The Show 23. Currently, the Royals are in the month of May. We will get into June in today's episode as, of course, the Royals try to make their way back to the American League playoffs and hopefully further, we're hoping, the World Series this season. It's a good team. The Royals are playing good baseball as of now. First place in the AL Central, competing with some of the best teams in all of the game as now we are in the month of June. Currently, 41 and 27 are Kansas City as we line up for this game here against the Los Angeles. Dodgers. We will play the second game of this three-game set. Asa Lacy will be on the bump for the Royals here tonight. And real quick, we're going to make a trade. Chris Bubich, uh, Bubich, Bubich, he's 28 years old, 74 overall. He's not starting. We are going to move on. I'm going to try to pick up a prospect because I'm trying to get some more guys on the Major League squad. Going to trade him uh, for a prospect from Colorado, Sal Harden, I think. He's 69 overall, I think 19 years old. Works for me. We get this game here at the Los Angeles Dodgers. It's one of the best teams in the American League, and the Royals taking on the best team in the National League. The Dodgers 50 and 21 heading into this game here at Dodger Stadium for the Royals, of course, 41 and 28. It should be a good one here from Los Angeles, California. The former Philly and Austin Nola will be on the bump for the Dodgers. And folks, if you haven't yet, though, make sure that subscribe button down below for some more Royals franchise mode here on the channel. Also, go make sure to check out Diamond Dynasty on the channel as well. Link is in the description down below. Aaron Nola makes the start tonight for the Dodgers. I said Austin earlier. You're at 3.06 for Aaron Nola so far this season. You will see Dylan Carlson first on the 2-1 pitch. Carlson going to hit a fastball in the right field, but ranging to his right, it will be Mookie Betts. And we're going to talk about this Dodgers lineup in a second. It is stacked. Your Royals lineup goes Carlson, France, Pasquantino, Witt, Santander, Melendez, Garcia, Cooper, and Cross. Yes, we are hitting Garrett Cooper against the righty today. We don't usually do it, but I just want to get him in the lineup. So no Salvi Perez here tonight. MJ Melendez will take over the catching duties. Vinny Pasquantino comes up on a 1-2 pitch and he will strike out. So the Royals go down in order in the top of the first against Aaron Nola. We go to the bottom of the first. Asa Lacy making the start. 3.89 is the ERA so far in his third season in the major leagues. 5-2 record, 11 starts. Lacy's been really productive this season so far for the Royals. That is not Trey Turner at the dish for the Dodgers. That is Miles Straw. I know it kind of looks like Trey Turner wearing number 7 and all. But Straw is going to ground out to third base. Gavin Lux comes up now on the 1-2. Going to shoot one right back up the middle and Gavin Lux will be on with a one out single. Mookie Betts now steps up on the 3-1 pitch. Betts going to hit that ball in the left field to Gavin Cross and again this Dodgers lineup is loaded. You got Betts in the three spot, Cruz in the four, Freddie Freeman, Austin Meadows, Carson Kelly, Gattel Amarte. It is a loaded lineup. And obviously the favorites too in the National League are the Dodgers. I mean, I think the Cardinals have a really good chance too, obviously the reigning world champs, but yeah, it will be St. Louis and Los Angeles as the two top dogs in the National League this season. So we go to the top of the second, Bobby Witt going to fly out into center field to Miles Straw. One gone for Anthony Santander. Santander going to chop one to second base, charging in though, is the leader of the Marte Parte. Tell Marte's got it. Two down for MJ Melendez, who is really struggling. Batting 197 is Melendez. He is the weak link in the lineup right now. And I think in the postseason, there's a very good chance we don't play Melendez. And we obviously play Salvi at catcher and we just DH Garrett Cooper. We'll see, because Cooper is batting 347. Given the sample size for him against right handed pitching is not great, as that one's going to drop in to right center field. However, Dylan Carlson with the cannon. Oh, he's going to throw out Austin Meadows at second base. But when game, you look at how this team is going to look come playoff time, I think this is, this is a very good chance. We will see how the season plays out. There's a good chance MJ Melendez doesn't see the lineup. Just considering, yeah, like he's probably the weakest link. And this is a guy right here in Luis Garcia who continues to show amazing results at the plate. I mean, this guy, every single year we've had him has been tremendous. I really like Luis Garcia in the lineup. Two gone for Dylan Carlson. He, though, will ground out to first base to Freddie Freeman. But yeah, when you look at the, the roster for the playoffs, obviously Melendez will be on the roster. It's just a matter of if we're going to play him or not. Because I think there's better guys than MJ Melendez. Now, I'm not going to move on from Melendez entirely because he is the catcher of the future. Once Salvi does go or once Salvi is washed up as Ty France blasts the ball into left field. That ball is going to get down. It will be an easy leadoff double for Ty France here to kick off the top of the fourth. But once Salvador Perez isn't playing at the level he should be, I think we do go to Melendez. It's just a matter of, like, we have to keep him around. We have to keep paying the guy. But I don't think he's honestly a starting caliber outfielder for us in this team. As there, Pasquantino flies out into center. Ty France tags and Oh, my goodness. He gets guns. Miles Straw throws him out. I mean, oh, man, on a hop. But still, just not ideal. Bobby Witt Jr., though, with two outs in the top of the fourth will 
Get a single up the middle, gonna hit that sinker right back up. And there goes Anthony Santander. Now the dish slide step by Nola, and Santander will be retired by Catella Marte. So again, as you look at the future of this team, and I'm not gonna do a complete breakdown of the future of this roster as O'Neill Cruz will strike out to end the fourth inning. It's just that I don't know where um, you know, I, I kind of know how our outfield looks. I think Dylan Carlson's the guy in the future for center. Santander for now is playing right field. We've got Freddie Ayala down in AAA who we picked in the draft a couple years ago. I think Ayala is going to be a starting caliber player. Maybe not next year, but the year after. Maybe next year. We'll see. I think we still have some time with Santander. Oh, by the way, we're in the top of the ninth inning. It's still nothing, nothing. Ty France comes off the runner on first and right into a double play. But I think the starting outfield for the future looks Carlson, Cross, and Ayala, and Santander can maybe then slide into a DH role, which I'm cool with. Where does MJ Melendez fit? That's my entire point. I don't think Melendez can be a starting caliber outfielder for this team once we have our guys that come up. So after Vinny Pasquantino gets on with the single, Bobby Witt Jr. comes up on a full count and Witt's gonna fly out into center. So if the Royals are gonna win this game in Los Angeles, they will have to get it done in extra innings. So we go to the bottom of the ninth. Dylan Coleman pitching now for Kansas City. He'll get Miles Straw to ground out to third base. One out for Gavin Lux on the 2-1 pitch. And Lux is gonna line one into right field. Santander chasing after it, but Lux will be on with an easy double. Relay throw in by Santander. Lux looking for three the throw by Luis Garcia he's got him perfect relay right there by Kansas City Lux is gunned out at third base Scott Barlow now comes in with two outs 1.69 is the ERA Mookie Betts comes up on the 2-2 pitch swing and a miss on a slider so we go to extra innings Carl Edwards Jr the former Cub and National comes in to pitch for the Dodgers ERA is 1.86 this season for him Santander comes up of course runner starts on second and Santander's takes strike three here comes MJ Melendez Melendez hits one hard oh my goodness Right to Miles Straw, we are able to move over 99 speed width to third. Two outs, runner on third for Luis Garcia, and Garcia comes through again. This guy has been, you know, truly spectacular over the years for the Royals. Garcia's on with the two out single. Garrett Cooper now in the 2 1 pitch. Cooper gonna get flown out into right field to Mookie Betts, but the Royals at least get one going into the bottom of the 10th. Here comes Jose Alvarado. He will get the save opportunity. 3.86 is the ERA for him this season. Alvarado will see O'Neill Cruz first. Cruz in the ground. Bobby Witt Jr. Got to hurry up. 99 speed out of Cruz. He's safe. First and second. One out for Austin Meadows. Deep right field. Nothing Santander can do but watch. And that's your ball game. Austin Meadows with the fly into right field. His ninth of the season. 380 feet is a walk-off shot for the Dodgers. 3-1 victory for Los Angeles. He will touch them all. And the Dodgers win 3-1 here at home against Kansas City in a low-scoring affair. But hey, I didn't want to just bore y'all to death with another low-scoring game. So for the first time here on the Grito Plays franchise series, here comes the two-episode game back in Kansas City against the Texas Rangers. The Royals are now 42-31, and 31, and the Rangers are 34-42. and 42. On the mound for the Royals, it will be Hunter Green. For the Rangers, it will be the lefty and John Means. I did this because we haven't been able to see a left-handed pitcher so far this season, at least in-game. So that's what we will get at the Texas Rangers zone. John Means, the winner of this game, will win the three-game set here on a Sunday afternoon. The Royals won game 1-8-4. to four. Texas wins game 2-10-7, so here comes the rubber match here in game number three. So making the start again will be Hunter Green at 3.46 is the ERA so far this season. 5-5, five 500 record, 14 starts for the hard-throwing Green. So two outs, runner on first here for Josh Naylor in the top of the first. He'll strike out though, looking on a fastball up. Means we will go to the bottom of the first to see John Means. See what I did there? Okay. 3.58 CRA for John Bean so far this season. Dylan Carlson's the leadoff man. And on the 3-2 pitch, Carlson works back up the middle. He'll be on it with a leadoff knock. So Carlson on first base for Ty France on the 2-1 pitch. France up the middle as well. Back-to-back -back singles to kick off this game here against the Rangers. France and Carlson both on for Vinny Pasquantino. Lefty-lefty matchup. Pasquantino hits one into left field. The hits keep on coming. Three in a row for the Royals as Pasquantino will have a... RBI double make that a two RBI double two nothing is the lead now for Kansas City. Bobby Witt Jr. now comes up on the 1-1 one, one pitch and Witt gonna fly one in to left field. That ball should be caught out there more in center. Will we tag Pasquantino at 25 speed? We will not. So we're holding Vinny on at second base now with one out for the five spot, which means Anthony Santander on the 2-2 two, two pitch. Santander is gonna saw one into right field. It's going to get down. Drops right in front of the right fielder into Dolas Garcia. We will hold him at the corners with one out for Salvi Perez on the 1-2. Salvador hits one into left field and Salvi's gonna get an RBI single here. 
three nothing for Kansas City but Garrett Cooper now on the one one pitch right back up the middle it gets through will the Royals send the runner from second base they will here we go everybody's safe Santander scores the Royals go up 4 0 here in the bottom of the first, looking for more. Luis Garcia on the 2 2 comes into today, batting 296. And the Rangers will turn a nice double play. A rare moment of lack of clutchness for Luis Garcia. We go to the bottom of the fourth after again, the Royals put up four in that first inning. Garrett Cooper still doing his thing. Of course, he kills left handed pitching. 111 off the bat right there with that single against John Means. Luis Garcia going to lift one into center. Going back on it will be the center fielder, but Garcia's hit will be a fly out. So one down in the inning now for the ninth spot Gavin Cross on the 1-1 pitch lefty lefty matchup and Cross just gonna line one back up the middle again he's better than MJ Melendez I do believe first and second one out for the top of the order which means Dylan Carlson on the 1-2 spot Carlson hits one into left center field that ball will get down everybody will be safe we got to keep running though and oh there's a log jam at the top oh my goodness we are going to be toasted home yeah Garrett Cooper not even close Second and third, two outs, still a 4 nothing game with no runs scored right there. Two spot up, which means Ty France on the 1-1 pitch. France! Fastball up and way out of here! Ty France makes it 7 nothing, And the Royals bats have officially come alive here on Sunday afternoon against the Rangers. France with his 11th shot of the season at 396 feet. He will take John Means deep, and that likely means Means' his day is done. Again, see what I did there? Okay, never mind. John Gray now comes in to pitch for the Rangers, the former starter, now turned long-term reliever comes in. Into the bottom of the seventh, we pick back up with them with another Ty France single. He'll be on first base for Vinny Pasquantino, the all-star, on the 2-1. Gray deals. Oh my goodness, Pasquantino! You can hear it off the crack of the bat. Pasquantino's got a double. We will hold France at third after the perfect, perfect knock. Bobby Witt Jr. now up on the one-two pitch. Witt gonna kind of get jammed into right 15 speed. Will it score him? I don't know. We're gonna try. Gonna try to save Bobby's, oh, average. <laughs> okay, somehow we score in there. We get in there with Ty France. Eight nothings now our score with two outs in the bottom of the seventh. Anthony Santander on the 3-1 pitch. Santander is gonna get popped down. Oh, by the way. Hey, we're doing well hitting wise. You got to give credit to our pitching as well. Hunter Green is holding down the fort on the other side of things to the bottom of the eighth. Salvi Perez got to show it. Get out of here. Get off me, baseball. Salvador Perez makes it a 9 nothing game for the Royals. Salvi shows he can still do it as well. It is a hit party at Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri. Similar to Ty France, this will be Salvador Perez's 11th home run of the season. 410 feet, and it is a complete washout here in Kansas City for this ball game and the final game of this three-game set against the Texas Rangers. We will close here in the top of the ninth. Aroldis Chapman has been struggling this season with an ERA of 8.15. Trying to get him going here, though, in this game against Texas, at least just for one inning in the top of the ninth. He'll get Josh Naylor to ground out to Vinny Pasquantino. Pasquantino back to Chapman, and that does it. The Royals win at home here against the Texas Rangers by a score of 9 to nothing. A rare show of complete dominance for the Royals. Sometimes this is hard to come by, but at least here on this Sunday afternoon, the Royals absolutely dominate the Rangers. They out hit the Rangers 15 to 3. Yes, you heard that right. They out hit Texas by 12. Absolutely crazy, and at least just a little better, I think, than their performance that we just saw in Los Angeles against the Dodgers. So, folks, thank y'all for watching episode number 70 of the Kansas City Royals franchise mode here on MLB The Show 23. I hope y'all enjoyed the two game episode. If you want to see this again, we'll make sure to hit that like button down below for more two game episodes. As again, we continue our march down to the 2026 MLB postseason. So, folks, thank y'all for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below for more. Make sure you have a like if you are enjoying the series so far. Give a for watching and Mamba forever.